This is E Radio. Coming to you live from our brand new headquarters uh, here overlooking the uh, magnificent Nisla Lagoon and also the uh, Nisla Heads. Life in the garden route is just so incredible. And uh, testifying that is uh, Rose, a travel bug Rose, coming to you this afternoon from uh, Hookville in the wilderness. Hello, Rose. Hello, Ian. How are you today? Fantastic. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. It's a beautiful day out here in the wilderness. Um, some scattered clouds. I see there's a nice westerly blowing breeze, a little brisky westerly blowing today. So, yeah, oh, it could probably be a good paradigm day, but I'm, I'm, I'm not out there. I'm out here working. <laughs> Why don't you go up there and I'll phone you back and then we do our interview like that today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be a little bit noisy, hey? Absolutely. So, yeah. Rose, That's a good one. <laughs> mm, definitely. Rose, how's your week been so far? Um, yeah, a little busy. It's been going to be a little bit of a crazy week. Um, busy um, doing some an article about glamping in the garden, which I'm slowly but surely accumulating. So I'm staying in a few places, doing some writing, and also working on some projects. So, a little bit busy. Yes. Yeah, but still fun. You 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 loving it? It's a it's a great job. It really is a great job to have. So Rose, today we're talking about back road tripping. Yeah, um, I just kind of came up with the idea because I spent most of my life actually in my little car or on a, in a four by four or on a bicycle or mm. hiking or something or you know and traveling on gravel. So, um, you know, I kind of had a look around the map of, of the Garden Ridge area and uh, realized that about 80% of our roads are actually um, gravel. Sure. And uh, if you are a road tripper and you like back roads and uh, off beaten track kind of stuff, this is probably the best kind of area to be in for that kind of, for that stuff. Um, yeah, and uh, get, it, get ready and pull out a map. And uh, start your journey, um, whether it's from the Muscle Bay side. And I know for a fact that the road, one road I absolutely love is the one that actually goes from Muscle Bay um, by Herbert Bell. And uh, if you know, there's Double Slay Winery up there in the Valley of them, if you know about it. And mm. then you drive past Herbert Bell down into uh, the long, dusty road a little bit that um, kind of goes along the Langeberg and then over the Horitz River, which is, um, you know, in the middle of the mountains, and then up to a little place called from Rakesdorf, um, which is normally a place that I stay up there early on the olive farm um, from a lady from Fishbrook, got an uh, uh, the olive, olive farm. She's got a little cottage up there, and if you really want to get away from all the digital stuff and to travel on gravel, that's probably a good place to be. And from Facebook side, you can basically head in, in a few directions. But my favorite direction is um, the Roybach Pass. So you go by the Roybach Pass, which takes you right up to the, almost one of the highest viewpoints um, in this, you know, linking the garden to the Klein Karoo. And it overlooks the several of the Passport and beautiful scenery. And if you're a motorbiker, it's definitely a road, a road trip to, to take on. And then you you kind of fall fall back down into the valleys of um, Cardistorp and Oathworm. And uh, then you can try, you can choose again. You can either hit left or you can go right. And normally my choice is left, which is towards Cardistorp. Mm. <laughs> Close. Goes into the brain, you see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, and you kind of head towards Cardistorp with uh, another kind of on the edge of the, um, you know, it's Kankaroo, um and heading towards the Overberg area, but it's, it's such a lovely place, Colossal, because from Colossal, you actually go via the back road there, you can travel all along the uh, gravel road, which takes you past Crimfontaine Dam and places like Peter Bailey's winery, He's got a small winery there, and you can stop in, and he loves to chat. 
and you can just actually sit there and, and have a he will feed you all kinds of stuff. He's got this lovely uh, like a honeypot jug drink which he mixes with tonic, mm. and it's delicious. So by the time you leave there, you probably need another place to stay soon. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then on the edge, just uh, before you, you actually get past Rebirth Lodge, which is. Beautiful from the glimmers of red stones and the mountains there. If you haven't seen it, it's probably a good place to go visit. Very um, picturesque, especially at sunrise or sunset, because the, the red stones just kind of pop out of the mountains. And from there on, you can uh, you can either choose to head back towards Otrum, but normally um, my other choice is to head towards um, to edge along the Swartberg Mountains. And then you, you're almost heading towards Spotberg Pass, and uh, you eventually arrive at Spotberg Pass. From there on, you can actually go up into the Spotberg Mountains um, towards Prince Albert or the Hell. You know, I don't know if uh, you've been to the Hell. <laughs> Nothing like Hell. <laughs> <laughs> it really feels like the Hell when you go there, temperature wise, I mean. <laughs> no, it's not. Actually, the name the Hell got the name from the guy who used to say if they have it, one the entrance to the Hell because the valley was an accessible road. There were two ways to access it. The one was by the Donkey Trail, which I hiked once and thought it was Hell. And <laughs> the other one was. They call the ladder, which you climb down into this valley. Um, and he actually called it the hell because he said it was hell getting in there. Oh. Um, but once, yeah, once you're in the valley, <clears throat> it's quite picturesque. And you've got beautiful um, um, you know, produce, like they produce uh, vegetables and uh, fruit and all kinds of things. And it's green and there's rivers flowing. So nothing like what the name would actually make it up to be. And they've got a, a lovely few cottages there that have been beautifully renovated and you can hire a cottage to get in for spend some time. Perfect space for if you're a 4x4 four four, or if you are a, a adventurous off-road biker. Um, but for the brave, I know that my sister and my mom have driven down there with a little golf <laughs> <laughs> and they made it. So... Yeah, if you're quite adventurous, you could probably go. Go to and then, of course, yeah, that's just pretty. And then, you, of course, if you head back, and you can either go via Prince Alfred and then head down back to Fumarin Court to the Rift, and then you, you can head to the Outback Road, which you, you can link, actually link up with the caves, and you can, basically you can get off-road and, and just head towards the Kango Caves and all those mm. places by gravel road, not even sometimes touching a tar road. And then you um, you can link up to Oatsburn by that and then almost with the gravel road, get all you can with the gravel road, which I've traveled quite My favorite road is from Oatsburn to the Montague um, entrance pass, where the Montague passed again, it's a um, mm. little hamlet of Harold. So you come out there, um, and you that's quite a love for people who like to cycle. Those long gravel roads, and they're very good condition. Um, so yeah, you hit on hit up that way, and then normally stop at Carol's for a little bit of tea or scone, <laughs> which is great. And then of course you can you hit on the Montague Pass, which is not very long, but it's a lovely pass. It's got quite a nice stop. You can actually get out at mm. one place down to the river, you know, and hop along the stones, pull yourself down if you wish to, and then get back on. And then, of course, you're in Pinsky George. And then a short distance from George to um, to the Pine Lake Lodge, which is the start of the Seven Passes Road. And uh, the Seven Passes Road, as we know, the original road, which links George to Nysa. And that will, like, take you all the way from George, five, seven passes along the foothills of the unique mountain uh, road and all the way to Nightmare. And of course, we know that both of these passes were built by Thomas Bain. Um, Thomas Bain actually built this pass um, uh, um, based on the, uh, or the equilibrium of the elephant. So um, he used elephant pass to make it because elephant has the mannerism of finding the correct balance and things. So, the elephant tracks was like a guide for them to actually build these roads along the sure. road, which is quite interesting. <laughs> very, very yeah. interesting. 
Yeah, and I mean, the seven past is on its own is for us. The one we put your mountains, go past Garacho, Barrington, um, the Garden of Trail Parks up there. And of course, they um, serve a mean cup of coffee. So if you're on the seven past road, you can be more than welcome to stop at the Garden of Trail Parks. Even if it's a pump track and a trail park for cyclists, it's a very welcoming place for beautiful little snacks or coffee. And the Rob the Mel's done a great job there to make you feel cafe very welcome and for people. And of course, when you head around the passes, down to up Hontini. Interesting, Hontini is, uh, I always like to mention, because Hontini is a coy word for difficult. Oh. And uh, if you look at yeah, <laughs> and if you look at the past, it's uh, kind of winds all the way down and winds all the way up, and then it takes you to Renandal. <clears throat> and from Renandal side, uh, of course, there you've got access to the Bitoka area, um, if you wish to visit the forest in that part of the world. Now that, that, or you can head down towards Niza via the Phantom Park, and of course, Phantom Park, as we know, it's not a phantom, but a butterfly. I heard about a fly moth, <laughs> sorry. Um, a moth? Named after a moth. A moth, yeah. Oh. The phantom was a, a huge uh, moth that had kind of eyes on the back of its, or looked like uh, eye like markings on the back of its uh, wings. Wow. And we called it the phantom, the phantom moth, yeah. So sure. that's where that came from. And of course, then you head into a uh, little town of Neisner, and from there, um, a lovely road to take for me, uh, which I enjoy, is I normally head up to, um, towards the Mola side, and then I normally take the, the Hona Road. Um, the Hona Road is, for me, one of my favorites because it has, not only the little Sun Embrasure Church up there, and the little Sun Embrasure Church is, of course, the little church that, um, <clears throat> I can't remember the reverend's name, but the English reverend built there for the Italian um, fog farmers. Um, after they came here and they, there was no real silk leaves or mulberry leaves. I thought the mulberry leaves were the same as the mulberry leaves in China, but they weren't. They were the wild mulberries, which were completely different tree, and they were kind of stuck here and now and couldn't get home after selling all the belongings of each week. Sure. So stopping at the little San Ambrosio Church, a real treat, really pretty. There's no entrance to be there, but, um, you know, just, just treated very kindly in the garden, in with respect. And for me, of course, uh, you head on towards the corner of the Kumsapat. Kumsapat is so beautiful. Um, I've actually stopped there a few times to take photographs. Also spotted a few of our little local um, little uh, dwarf chameleon in that forest, which is very lucky. You know, I always feel like a child when I find one. <laughs> oh. And then uh, you gently head up towards... Dipala, stopping at the Dipala, um, there's a tree just on the road, if you turn right, and the museum, um, a lovely museum that's put together, Sam has done a great job of actually putting a museum up there. It's got an elephant skeleton and a lot of the history of the mine, um, of the mining in the hotel um, uh, reserve, so it's really, really worth it. And, um, and then, of course, um, you from there on you you can turn left and head towards Spitcock. And um I don't know if you spotted a few of my photographs the other day about Spitcock. I um, think so. It's yeah, you know, it's basically the viewpoint that is um the highest accessible um by vehicle. And uh, once you're up there you can actually sit there and you can look it's got a 360 view of the area, so you can look towards the the, 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 um, the what the hell <laughs> off it past, uh, the uh, what's it? Oh goodness, I've got lost Are we words. back in the hell uh, now? <laughs> 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 Let's just go back to hell. <laughs> Uh, the Prince Alfred Post. There we go. <laughs> there we go, Rose. Well done. <laughs> yeah. And you can see plates from there, and you can actually see the knives my head from there as well. Oh, stunning. And this, yeah, so Spitzko was the place where the was a lookout point for the spot when they still had fire tree there, and actually you could spot cell fires from there, and you could spot cell fires from miles away. So that was the place why they used Spitzko. Back in the day in the 1800s, 
turning 17 to 1800. Um, yeah, from Spitzkop you can either head on a little bit further and then turn um, left towards Wittendrift, which is heading towards the cliff. Um, there, either that or you can basically, or you can head up prior to Uniondale, which will take you into the Bobby, eventually take you into Willowmore, Uniondale, Willowmore, into the Bobby on, but that's a little bit out of our region. Um, and to the little place called the Flucht. The Flucht is a nice little tiny little hamlet and it's got a little shop we grab cold things. Oh, I mean, it's, um, it's basically covering a little bit of all the linked, linked areas by, uh, gravel and of course um, yeah and then of course we give there's a few other passes which you can visit but they're mostly part but most of those that I've spoken about is, um, is on gravel so I have a, a little blog that I have um, written about my journey from uh, Mossel Bay to um, Carlisle which is called Travel on Gravel and you're welcome to go and read a little bit about the, the back roads of from Lake Stork and this is China from Lake Stork, which is really cute. I like uh, the name, Travel on Gravel. We were back road travel. tripping with uh, <laughs> Travel Bug Rose this afternoon in the garden route in Klankaroo. How's it, South Africa? Thank you, uh, Rose. As always, uh, I, I sometimes just switch off my mic when you're busy talking because I just so enjoy listening to you. It kind of feels like you're taking me to all these places. Uh, most of them I haven't <laughs> been to. Thank you so much. We'll do it again next uh, Tuesday at uh, 2 o'clock. And uh, in case you missed it or you tuned in a bit late, uh, we've got the podcast up later this afternoon on eradioessay.com. Where are you off to now? Are you just taking it easy for the rest of today, Rose? Um, um, well, I'm actually sitting here at, as I said to you, I'm sitting here at Hukul Cafe in Hukul. Um, and I'm going to be shooting photographs for um, their new little treat and eat. Um, they've got a variety of new cheese cakes and stuff like this. And um, if you're ever around this area, please visit the domestic cook of York. Find it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Will they let you taste uh, uh, those cheesecakes that you're going to take photos of? Do you think they're going to give you a bite? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky girl. Enjoy it. You deserve it. <laughs> um, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Rose. Have a lovely And you. Until next week. Okay. Take okay, care. Thank you. Bye. Bye now. That's Rose Bug, Travel Bug Rose, talking to us this afternoon from uh, Wilderness. We were talking about all the amazing back routes you can take here in the garden route. Your systems are offline. E Radio Live, powered by TCS Wi Fi.